Hey everybody out there, this is Nick, and I'm just going to design a thumbnail for one of my YouTube videos. I had a I had a set of old thumbnails that I kind of liked, but I don't like them now, so I'm redoing them. So I have a video um, about making blob shapes in PowerPoint, and I'm just going to design this thumbnail kind of live. I tried to do it in a live stream, but I didn't realize it was going to be looking at me and not my screen. <laughs> so i got to figure out how to do that at some point. But anyway, this isn't you know, necessarily a tutorial. I'm just going to kind of click through and design. Um, and I'll probably put some music to the background of the video. But anyway, enjoy and let me know in the comments uh, if you see anything you like. I have this photo. And I like to put... As soon as I started putting my own photos into my thumbnails, I started getting more views. <laughs> so I tried to put pictures of cats before, and then I tried to do just like very generic thumbnails, but people want to see the, the person behind the video. So I'm going to do this, and then let's see, you know, you can remove the background from photos. So I'm going to try to remove the background of this. Now I have a pretty busy background here, so it can be kind of challenging. So we'll see if it works. But if you go to the picture format and then remove background, you can see that PowerPoint thought it should remove everything in purple except for my shirt and a little bit of my pants. So let's see. I'm going to keep some of this stuff. See what happens. Looks like it's coming back. If I click on these things, just little clicks here and there. smaller. One trick that I learned from a YouTube creator, his name is Tyler Stanzik, I think I'm going to uh, link to him in the description, but he loves putting these glow effects around pictures and around pictures of himself or whoever the focal sort of object is of the thumbnail, so I like to do that too. I think it looks really nice and it looks good from afar. Like, you know, one one way I like to test these out is just looking over here in the slide um, in the slide sorter view, kind of on the side here, the slide pane. You know that your thumbnail on your YouTube video is probably people scrolling through on their phone, so it's gonna look like this. So if it looks good over here, it's probably gonna look good on your phone, you know. Format this picture, we're gonna add some glow effects here. I like to do um, zero transparency because then it's a nicer glow. And then usually 10 or 20 on this on the glow effect. Just go with 10 for now. I have my color palette for my uh, my own sort of personal color palette here with this blue, teal, blue, red, orange, and um, kind of yellowish orange I really like. And I just generated that from coolers, coolers.co. I'll put that link in the notes in the description too, but that's a great site for generating color palettes. I do need some help in colors because I realize I just constantly gravitate towards this like blue, orange, red, or blue, orange, yellow um, kind of color palette. 
It's pretty sort of primary. But I don't know. I think it looks good. This is my logo here. I just made this with PowerPoint shapes, but it's a picture right now. All right, let's see what color I want this to be. I think I'm going to do um, yellow. Most of my other ones are yellow or white. So I'm gonna, actually, maybe I'll just do white. You can't see, can't see it right now. I usually put this over here. All right, and let's see. My old thumbnail looks like this. Well, let's see if I can find it. I might have actually put it down here. So this is my old thumbnail. That's what it looks like there. I want it to look, I want my new thumbnail to look a little bit more like my current ones, which this is, this is one of those. When I put it in slideshow mode, you can see a good thing. Hope you go view this video. Uh, that was a pretty cool trick too. Just using black and white and then using that um, remove background trick from photos. You can do it in PowerPoint. You don't need other software to do it. So, okay, I'm going to move this over to the side. One of the cool things about PowerPoint is that you have this pasteboard over here on the side. I mean, anything that's on the white will be shown in your slide or your image that you're creating, but anything off to the side won't be shown. So you can see over here in the preview that you can't see any of this extra, these extras or that um, image right there. So pretty cool. So the title is Create Your Own Blobs in PowerPoint. I'm going to go ahead and make that title. We'll insert a text box. Let's see here. Um, Bob's. And actually, I'm just going to leave the PowerPoint out of this one because I'm going to have the PowerPoint logo in there. And it's nicer to have less words, I think, on the side. So create your own Bob's. Very nice. If you have the bright slide add-in for PowerPoint, you can have some really easy features like adjusting the paragraph line spacing. You can also adjust the lettering, the lettering spacing, but I think that looks pretty nice. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Nice. Cool. I like that. One thing that um, I learned from Tyler is that he likes to put like abs you know kind of transparent abstract photos in his background and i never used to do that but i started doing that and i think it gives a really nice effect so all you have to do there is just insert a photo stock images you can search just any term here but i'll just see blob and see what happens so there's all these different blobs that's kind of interesting let's see we could do i don't know this is kind of actually cool Insert that. You can probably hear my cat Thomas meowing in the background. I probably won't remove much of the noise from this video, so you'll hear probably my air conditioner, you'll hear my music, all that stuff. Everything in PowerPoint is in layers, so every time you add something new, it adds to the top layer. So you can arrange those layers uh, by sending it to the back. So I just sent this photo to the back. And if you go up here to the selection pane, you can see all the different images or all the different objects. Anything that you put on the slide lives here on a different layer. And this is the top layer right here. So this is the text box. So I'm going to actually name it. You can actually name this. So I'm just going to say title. And then I can go over to the selection pane and I always see the title there. Now if I wanted to move the title to the back, I could just drag it all the way down and now the title's to the back. Drag it up. You can even hide things on these layers. So there's this little um, hide button and you can click it and then it'll disappear. Click it again, it'll reappear. You can even, now you can lock, uh, lock images to layers in PowerPoint. So if, if I lock this here, I think it'll always stay on the top layer, which is exactly what I want. So that's nice. I'm gonna turn this text white. The photo I want to be the exact same size as the slide, cropped to slide. And actually, well, yeah, I like the fact that this blob is like right here. So, um, in uh, one thing that I like to do in bright slide, on that right side, free PowerPoint add-in from Bright Carbon. I'll put that link in the um, description notes below too. But they can, if you click a photo, you can actually match it with just one click to the size of the slide. So just click it, and it matches the entire, it crops the image to the entire um, size of the slide, so it doesn't stretch the image, but it crops it, uh, makes it look really nice. I'm going to just click OK on that crop, and look at that. I mean, that looks pretty chic. 
as Dorit would say. Anybody watch um, Beverly Hills Housewives? <laughs> Probably that many of you. Let's see, I can drag this up, make this a little bigger. Wow, I think that looks actually really nice. You can see in my other videos, I also have this sort of border around, and then these, just these are just shapes that kind of um, frame sort of the, the whole slide, and then also kind of overlaid my logo on top of that. So actually I'm going to make the logo bigger, because my logo is usually bigger. So I'm going to hold shift and then make it bigger so that my head overlaps a little bit. And we can do it like this. I love that. And then, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and do a triangle. Let's see, we'll do this triangle here. I'm going to rotate it. Mm, I need it to be like this. The right triangle so that it's in the corner. Let's see. I don't think I want well, actually, I do want an outline, and I wonder if I want this to be yellow or blue. I'm kind of looking over. I think I want this to be this orange. No, I think I want this to be this yellow. It's probably going to stand out a little bit better. And then my outline, I want to be the yellow as well. But something that I kind of like doing is putting, making the outline this sort of drawn line effect, or a PowerPoint calls it sketchy line. So over here in the format shape menu, you know, you can um, update the line line, fill color, all that stuff. But down here under the width, you'll see if you have three, Microsoft 365, I think it's available on Mac, maybe it's available in other versions now too. This says sketched style, and then you can click that, and then there's a bunch of different sketchy lines that you can kind of do. So it kind of gives it this hand-drawn effect. And some are better than others. I usually have to just sort of, you never kind of get the same one twice, it seems. So I kind of just put that up. And I'm just going to send this one to the back. Let's open our selection pane again. And then my right triangle, I'm just going to call this logo triangle. And let's see which picture. If you click on these, you can see where's my picture. This, so this is me. So I'll say Nick. And then this is the background. Oh no, that's actually my. Um, my little thumb, my previous thumbnail. So I'm just gonna keep that on the side. Previous image, and my picture one is actually my logo. So I'm gonna say logo, and then my picture. This is the background photo. Cool. So when you click all these, it highlights them, and then that's when you can sort of work with them. I want the logo to be above, the, or I want the triangle to be behind the logo. So I'm going to drag it there. And now that goes away, that's pretty cool. It looks okay. I think maybe because of that sketchy line style, it kind of... Um, you might be able to see the photo in the back, so I want to make this a little bigger. I'm going to hold down Shift and then proportionally arrange that. That looks nice. That way then, in the thumbnail, I won't be able to see some of those ragged edges. Because remember, anything that's on the pasteboard over here, you're not going to be able to see when you put it in the presentation mode. That's how the thumbnail would look. Pretty cool, huh? All right, and then let's see. Let's make the border box. So to do that, I just put a box around, and then we're going to make it the entire size of the slide. Up. Shape outline, I'm going to make yellow. And the shape fill, I'm going to set to no fill. So I give it to white. No fill. There you go. And while it's still selected, we're going to get to the format shape menu. And then over, over the lines, I'm just going to increase the width of the line so it's really big. Let's say 15. That looks nice. And you can see it has a nice border around it. Create your own blobs. I might move this kind of to the middle. We'll see how this looks. Oops. Hmm, I wonder why. Let's see if I do the selection pane and I do the title. There you go. Huh. I wonder why I can I can't align or I can't move my title around. Oh, I see, because I locked it. 
Interesting. Okay, so this is the first time that I played with that lock feature. So if you lo if you lock the title, it looks like it stays there, but it also stays in position. So that's interesting. But I guess it doesn't say on that on the layer. It doesn't say on the top layer. It just stays in the position that you want it. So that's cool. So if I unlock it, then I'll be able to move it and align it. So I want it to align middle. So that looks really nice. So I guess I'll lock it again, but it doesn't lock. Um, let's put this image on the top layer. It doesn't lock it. It doesn't lock it on the layer. That's interesting. I think locking a layer might be a might be a nice feature for PowerPoint. I'm going to suggest that in the help forum. Anyway, cool. So I think this looks really good. I'm going to actually just click out of here and then make the background of my slide. Let's see, if I make the, right now it's just white, if I make it yellow, and then I adjust the picture transparency, the photo transparency, let me see. Let's go back to our selection pane and our background photo. Perfect. I wonder if I adjust the transparency if the blobs become a little bit more yellow. Right here. That didn't do anything. I wonder if I have to do it here. Yep, that looks like it. So if I make it 100% transparent, the whole background should be yellow. Yeah, there you go. But interesting, it turns kind of blue. I guess that's just because of the black color. So that dark color with yellow kind of turns blue. So. Let's see. And in this case, I might not even need any transparency. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna keep it black, what do you think? Alright, then I want a PowerPoint logo, so I'll take one from my other slide. I just downloaded this from so online. Made sure that, that it was a transparent logo. We'll copy it. Paste it. Make it big. case, I want it to be a little smaller than my logo circle, and then I don't want it to be as, you know, I guess I could be funny and like put the PowerPoint logo over my head. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. We'll probably not do that. I've done it before. It's about it. Anyway, I think it looks kind of good. I think it looks good as is. So if I really, I'm just going to delete uh, my old one. If I wanted to make a blob, I guess I could do that here too. And let's see if I could do that with a circle. So it doesn't really matter how proportional this is because I'm going to make, just like in the video, make sure to watch the video, um, I'm going to make my, my blob here. I'll just make that so everything is the same. You right click and then click on edit points. You can kind of make your own sort of blob shapes this way. You see blobs everywhere, and I guess maybe I haven't looked in a while to see if there's still sort of a trend, but if you design things in Canva, people love blobs in Canva. You know, these kind of oblong, oval shapes. I'll click on edit points again. Let's see how this goes. You do this, you get these little sliders here that you can adjust. And I think when you, yeah, when you right-click this, you can say smooth point, straight point, corner point. Um, I haven't played a lot with these, like add point, open path, like that's kind of interesting. Oh, I see, that kind of like gives that. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can really do with PowerPoint. That when you play around with these things, you can kind of create these custom shapes. But I don't really like that flat edge there. So I wonder actually if I could just drag it off to the side. Hmm, I wonder how that looks. I think that looks bad. <laughs> let's do it again. Actually, if I just undo a bunch of times, let's see what happens. Cool. Uh, that might work. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. That's nice. Push that up.
yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. So I wonder if I should get a glow effect on that too. Probably make it white. So I'll go over here to the effects and then we'll make it glow. My glow settings are set. Bobs. Hmm. I wonder if I should just do something like this. Maybe like an underline. Hmm. That's cool. I like it. What do you think? Make your own blobs. Kind of just like an underline and then the glow is on there too, so I kind of did do the blob. I don't know, I kind of just like this. It looks clean, the blob is in the background, I think it's enough visual. Let's see if I increase the glow on that. Nice. Uh, I actually might want to raise the height of the text box just a little bit. So I gotta unlock it again. Cool. I like it. I think my text is already set to have a little bit of shadow. A little bit of drop shadow on it. Um, I think it helps pop the text. You could do lots of different things with your text if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, it does look like I have a little bit. Oh no, I just have no shadow though. So if I, if I did a shadow, it just kind of gives a little... I probably don't want to do any transparency on it. The angle probably is fine. You can kind of see over that A. Kind of pops it up. So I think I like that. That looks nice. Very nice. Alright, cool. Very cool. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to save this as an image. We'll save it as a JPEG because it's less size and um, YouTube doesn't like huge file sizes for um, huge file sizes for the thumbnail. So I could save as, like usual, save as and then um, go here, save as JPEG to so ask you the file type. Or, if you have right side, you can actually export files as images. So go to that right side tab, and then they have under file and master, they have an export. And I'm just going to say, um, save selected, let's see, what is this? Export media files, export selected imp slides as images. So this one slide is selected. Uh, please save the presentation first. So it makes you save. We'll go back to export. And cool. PNG. Here you can like designate the width and the height, sort of the pixels. You can say, I want it to be double the scale or single the scale. Um, I think double the scale should be fine. I actually think it would be fine if it was just um, one to one, so 1.0, but we'll keep it like this just so everything stays nice. I think everything here is pretty high resolution anyway. So I'm going to click on OK, and then it asks where we want it to store it. I'll just store it here in pictures. And then it gives me this, says one slide exported. Cool. So you could do that in a whole batch. If I wanted all of these to be exported in one batch, I could select all the photos and select them all in, in one click. So bright side is a is a great add-in that you should that you should get. There's a lot of different things that you can do in there. Cool. So now they're in my pictures. If I go over to my YouTube uh, content videos, let's go and find my blob video down all these different ones. Let's see where my blah video is. Blah, 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 blah. I've slowly been recreating my thumbnails. So this is down here. Just edit your video and then um, you'll put here, right here is your thumbnail option and you can update your thumbnail. So I'm gonna click on change and we'll go back to pictures and there's my new thumbnail. Create your own blobs. Cool, and then just click OK, save. Nice. And then when you go back, it usually takes a little while, but you may see your thumbnail pop up right there. Looks really, really cool, and you just designed it all in PowerPoint. A lot of cool things that you can do right in PowerPoint, not just for slides, you can, ex you can create website images of different sizes, images with text, different gradients, transparency, all the different techniques that we did. Um, in this video here. So I hope you use PowerPoint for your next design project and don't think of it just as a slide software. Good luck. Go forth and PowerPoint.
<laughs> I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to my channel. If you subscribe, you can get notifications. If you set the bell to the little to, to the right, just say uh, set your notifications value that way. So it was cool. Thanks for watching this today. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you next time.